Hello everyone. You know, this time I want to talk about something that seems to be all the rage these days in certain circles. And that's the notion of blockchains. This is the core technology behind such things as Bitcoin. So Basically, a blockchain means you've got the start of everything is block number zero, say. And then absolutely every block after that chains off of the block preceding it. Now, what that means is you can backtrack the entire history of the whatever's being uh, maintained through this blockchain all the way back to time zero. And that sounds wonderful. But you need to protect that blockchain from uh, manipulation. Uh, and that's going to require some sort of cryptographic thing. Uh, and you need to do something to help prevent anyone from running away with it and things like that. Now, this is where some of the things go wrong. Now, I'm not saying that blockchains are necessarily bad. Where I think they are a horrible idea is when volumes get large. Let's look at Bitcoin specifically. Every transaction in Bitcoin has to get into a block and be confirmed and uh, dealing with a block involves uh, doing a whole bunch of cryptographic stuff. That's not the problem with Bitcoin. The problem is that as these blocks get larger and larger and larger, they take up space to store. And to participate meaningfully in the Bitcoin network, you have to maintain a copy of the entire blockchain. Now, that's where it breaks down. In Bitcoin, you've got a new block every roughly 10 minutes, at least if the network is functioning the way it should. The problem there is that over time, the individual transactions become more and more complicated because the Bitcoins themselves get more and more broken up. So when the, the blockchain is young, Say I got in right at the beginning and I mined 100 Bitcoins, way back or early days. So I mine 100 Bitcoins. Great, I've got 100 Bitcoins. If I want to spend 50 of them, then I need only one entry in that transaction. Because I have 100 in a single lump. Then I collect 25 Bitcoins from somebody else. And we'll say that took one chunk. Now I want to pay 75 to a third party, to a, yet another. Well, that transaction is going to take two chunks, because now I have non-continuous coins. And this gets exacerbated as time goes on, and more and more transactions happen. The Bitcoins get split up all over the place in that fashion. So each tra over time, each individual transaction is going to get larger in terms of data storage requirements. That also means that fewer and fewer transactions will fit inside some reasonable limit on the size of a block. And that's going to impair the ability of the network to function especially since the entire network has to be aware of the transactions in order for it to actually confirm them. The larger the transaction is going to be, the more bandwidth is going to be required to transmit it around the network. And that's going to hit bottlenecks as well. So with Bitcoin, we have to maintain, to participate meaningfully, the entire block hit blockchain history. We also need to uh, keep 
everything in sync so everybody knows what everybody else is doing. The blocks need to be confirmed according to the protocol, all of that jazz. Now, you may not think that's necessarily a big deal because storage is, is not expensive and you can easily store the blockchain. Of course, it takes bloody forever to get a, a complete blockchain history if you're starting from scratch. And that is a problem. And that gets worse as time goes on because necessarily the blockchain is going to get larger and larger and larger and larger without bound. So while Bitcoin may be largely effective today, modulo certain issues that are always ongoing, uh, mostly people issues, uh, eventually the blockchain itself is going to collapse under either the computational load of maintaining it or the storage load of joining, just joining the blockchain, just observing it, let alone uh, participating. Eventually, it's going to necessarily collapse because it's going to necessarily grow without bound. So how could you sort that out? Well, you'd need some way to somehow authenticate later blocks without having to have the complete historical blockchain. And there, there are probably ways that you can do that. I can think of some ways that would help. Invariably, though, anything that relies on maintaining the entire history back to the dawn of time as part of the necessary information to maintain the protocol is going to collapse under its own weight at some point in time because that means that the requirements are going to necessarily grow toward infinity. Now, there are cases where something like this makes perfect sense. In some cases, you really do need the history back to time zero. And if you need that kind of an audit trail, then something built specifically to track that audit trail does make sense. But in most things, you do not need a perpetual history for the audit trail. You just need known, valid points in time that you can go back to. And oftentimes, you need just a sliding window that you can go back to. For something like Bitcoin, which claims it's a currency, which it's not, by the way, it's a commodity, uh, I don't care what anyone tries to say. It's a commodity, no matter how you slice it. It does not behave like currency. Uh, and commodities make very poor currencies in the long term. That aside, Bitcoin still wouldn't make a good currency if you didn't need that history back to the dawn of time to be sure that you're dealing with authentic transactions. Because... It's artificially limited, and uh, it cannot grow based on the requirements of the economy it supports. That's why commodities in general do not make good currencies. You cannot increase the commodity supply if you need additional currency to support the ongoing current transactions. That's why gold doesn't work. That's why silver doesn't work. If they did, we never would have moved away from using them and gone toward fiat currency because there wouldn't have been any problems and people would have gone, why do we need to change anything? So, you know, there we go. So generally, blockchain stuff, while it's all the rage in all sorts of circles, I think is a dead end in most applications. And I won't be surprised if we come along in 5 or 10 or 15 years and find out that blockchain-based anythings are just non-functional uh, non over a long term. Now, blockchains themselves are not necessarily useless. Uh, I think they'd be perfectly reasonable as a sub aspect of something where 
you know, where ordering of transactions or whatever matters, things like that, it might make sense to be using blockchains for that. But some sort of a, a wrinkle on them that separates that from the overall ongoing history of the thing that you're dealing with, that's going to be necessary. Because we need to avoid the growth without bound problem. Uh, that's plaguing Bitcoin uh, already. Uh, the last time I had to reinitialize uh, my uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, client, it took uh, what it took what two weeks to catch up, and that was a couple of years ago, a year and a half. It was a long time ago. So, uh, if that's going to be the case, uh, you know, it's it's a high barrier for the casual person to join. Now, there may be some ways around that that have been implemented that I'm not aware of because I'm using the full Bitcoin client, but I really don't think there's a functional long-term solution to that. Not and still maintain the integrity of the network, at least. And that is critical to Bitcoin. So we need an alternative to these blockchains to allow these sorts of situations without having growth without bound. So we need some manner that we can maybe audit the stuff back in time without requiring all participants to also carry around the same uh, massive audit trail. In fact, it should be possible, if you say you want something to be used as a currency, it should be possible to use it with, with minimal state information available. There should be some way to join uh, the network without having to do computationally heavy lifting or storage heavy lifting or any of that just to get in the door. As long as that's necessary, these things cannot catch on. And Bitcoin, uh, while I, I maintain it's not a currency that is a commodity, it can work very well as a commodity. Uh, it's limited, and that means that it should hold value as long as people are willing to trade it. Same as gold, silver, whatever, things that are limited are reasonable inflation hedges and so on. Bitcoin's not at the moment because it's too volatile, but it's a commodity, so you can potentially make or lose money at it, just like you can with oil or any other commodity. And for that reason, uh, I fully support Bitcoin continuing to exist. And anybody else that wants to make some sort of a virtual commodity like that, go for it. Maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. If you can convince people to trade in your commodity and then sell the, the batch that you got for being an early adopter for a hundred million dollars, go for it. You've convinced people to give you the money, you deserve it, really. But uh, as long as this stuff depends on blockchains, I think it's ultimately doomed. And you know, I'm probably going to catch flack for this if anybody in the know ever watches this video. But to the smart people out there working on these things, step back and recognize the fundamental flaw with blockchain technology, that, and that is that the blockchain must necessarily grow without bound, and anyone who wishes to be certain that they have correct information has to have the entire blockchain. That is a fundamental flaw for anything that needs to be used by any significant number of people. So you people that, the smart people out there working on these things like Bitcoin, step back, recognize the fundamental flaw, and see if you can't find a different way to do things that's just as effective that doesn't have that fundamental flaw. I'd be happy to see it. Uh, 
it's not my field. Uh, I don't have any particular insight on that. But I do know that growth without bound blockchain cannot work long term. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching.